Thanks for having me. So I'm I'm currently a, a professor and senior group leader here at, uh, at Kiwama Berghofer, where I head the gene regulation and translation laboratory for the last four years. And really, my experience over the last 24 years is very much uh, is focused on being a clinical and translation focused epigenetic researcher where we've really t advanced drug development into the clinic. And really this journey really started when I completed my PhD at King's College in London. And I was very privileged to get a pharma-sponsored uh, fellowship. And what that taught me at a very early uh, a stage of my career is the importance of tra combining translation research with commercialization. And since then, I've had various roles spanning both academia, pharma, as well as startup, both internationally, but as well as in Australia, where I've had various leadership roles, for example, in, in, in teaching as an academic. I've been very proud to have established clinical-led PhD programs. I'm very much about mentoring, especially women in, in science, to keep them here in science. But at the same time, I've had roles in commercial and translation, really engaging very closely with pharma. And I've been very lucky enough to be a founder and a CSO of a startup as well. So just really given me a very versatile background, really, but importantly, to translate our research to help patients. The focus um, of my lab here at QMR is very much what I like to point uh, is that we're harnessing very novel reverse translation pipelines that we've developed to, to really unravel the deregulatory epigenomic programs using space, cutting edge spatial technology as well as uh, liquid biopsies of patients where we're able to really peel apart the, uh, the deregulated cellular phenotypes at a really unprecedented level of resolution. And what this has allowed us to do for the very first time is identify new molecular epigenetic targets. And in doing so, we've developed novel epigenetic therapeutics and importantly, companion diagnostics uh, with, with these therapeutics. And a focus in this context in my lab is really for treating or, or for looking at the, these sort of mechanisms in these aggressive cold tumors, such as metastatic breast cancer, but also in par parallel chronic inflammatory diseases such as COPD. And more recently, we've done a lot of work in, in the context of persistent inflammation in, in, long, um, in long COVID. And in these, both these arenas, in the context of metastatic breast cancers, as well as in chronic inflammation diseases, we've made major advances. And we've, for example, most recently published a pivotal paper um, in Nature Communications showing for the first time how persistent inflammation may be important in the context uh, of, of COVID. But we've also had uh, various international uh, patents and developed epitherapeutics in the context of our, our cancer work, which are various stages of, of, of clinical development and backed up with, with pharma. But, um, um, but at the end of the day, this is all possible because I'm extremely fortunate to have a very talented team of young uh, um, researchers who have got expertise in clinical epigenetics, drug development, and we've got extremely close partnerships with clinicians and pathologists and AI machine learning experts. And together, we were able to advance these sort of approaches rapidly. And this is only possible because QMR is a, a world-class translational facil facility where we've got cutting edge equipment Equipment. And we are very privileged to be surrounded by a large network of hospitals that we're very closely engaged with that, that allows us to be able to do this sort of translation research in my laboratory. So epigenetics is really an, what I consider as still an emerging area. And epigenetics is the layer above our DNA sequence, independent of gene mut mutations, that really eloquently responds to environmental signals to, to alter gene expression. And importantly, the epigenome offers unique features in terms of therapeutics that not, no other therapy 
pick is able to do, it leaves behind a memory footprint and it is reversible and that is that is that's present long after the RNA and the protein has disappeared from the cell. And this this means that epigenetics is ex extremely exciting. It allows us to rewire the disease cells to a healthy phenotype as well as it allows us to be able to prime cancer cells or immune cells to allow standard tra treatments to work on patients that otherwise would not have an, any other option. And importantly in this context, we and others have shown a central role for these epigenetic enzymes in two critical cell types that we know are mediate IO resistance, chemo resistance, and are important for cancer recurrence and metastases. And really, the, in, the, in the context of, of, of cancer, these there are the subset of what we call dormant cancer cells, which are known as the metastatic initiating tumor cells. And these cells are completely resistant to, to standard of care. And in fact, they become enriched following standard of care. And these lie in niches within, in, within the patients, and they could lie there for weeks or months. And they then, then, then become uh, um, uh, reversed, and they then mediate metastases by spreading to other sides of the, the body. Now, secondly, in the context of the immune system, these standard of care treatments do not target these what we call exhausted immune cells within the patients. And the key exhausted immune cells are these CD8 T cells. And by exhaustion, I mean these T cells no longer able to kill, they're not no longer able to produce key granzymes and key proteins important for killing. And therefore, what we and others have shown is that the these key epigenetic enzymes and the epitherapeutics that we develop have developed offer an, an exciting opportunity for us to be able to rewire these dormant resistant cancer cells to make them more immune visible, as well as able to reprogram the terminally exhausted T cells so we can restore the, the, the killing function. And so therefore what we've done is we've been developing therapeutics targeting specifically these dormant cancer cells and these exhausted T cells so we can rewire them. But at the same time, we've been able to develop non-invasive liquid biopsy assays to, to monitor these epigenetic enzymes. And what that means is that we can track if these enzymes are actually rewiring the cells. And at the same time, for clinical trials, this is amazing uh, utility because we know very early on if the treatments are actually working. The key focus of my lab is really, as I mentioned earlier on, is, uh, is, is looking at cold tumors. So these are very aggressive tumors where there's, where there's a major unmet need. And our focus has been particularly on breast cancer, and, and as you already may, uh, fully aware, is one of the most diagnosed cancer types in women globally. For example, in the US alone, there have been 300,000 cases with 44,000 deaths in 2023 alone. And metastatic recurrence, which is the spread of the cancer from the primary side to the other sides of the body, is unfortunately the major cause of death in, in the majority of women with breast cancer. And triple negative breast cancer is the aggressive form with, with unfortunately minimal treatment options and, and no cure. And really the question is, why, my, why have I focused on breast cancer? And, and really my journey to tackle metastatic breast cancer really began when I, I guess like most of us, we've had firsthand experience of this aggressive a, a cancer uh, impacting us personally, and and I'm no different. Uh, a very close friend of mine, uh, Melanie Swan, at the age of 39, following the birth of her second daughter, I saw her and ex a first-hand experienced metastatic cancer, and unfortunately, she lost her life in 2016. And she was a, a passionate advocate and would do anything to have stayed alive to see her daughters grow up. And it's at that time, having been through this journey with her and being a, a, a research scientist, I realized then in 2015 really that, that I had to do something about it. And really, for me, that meant that we had to pursue the development of 
non-invasive liquid biopsy blood test so we can track the disease bur burden towards early intervention, but at the same time develop novel drugs that we can allow the person's own immune system to function. And so this is where we became interested in being able to develop companion drugs against immunotherapy. So this is the reason why um, my lab and I are very passionate about this as we've experienced our own journeys in many ways in this very aggressive cancer, but there's a major unmet need. And really in terms of where we are with, 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 with breast cancer, especially our focus is on the, as I mentioned, the triple negative breast cancer, which is the most aggressive form of, of breast cancer. And until recently, the standard of care was only option for these patients was chemo and, and radiation. However, uh, most recently, quite excitingly, a subset of patients re respond modestly to immunotherapy. And this has meant that this cancer is immunogenic. And really, th that means that there is an urgent need to identify new generation treatments that in combination with immunotherapy will increase the efficacy of this approach to really advance patients uh, in terms of the, the sort of treatments. Because at the end of the day, if we can allow their own immune system to, to kill the cancer, that is the best option. Yes, absolutely. So as mentioned uh, earlier, that really in terms of tackling metastatic cancers, there's really two really two cell types that we uh, are wanting to impact, which is these dormant cancer cells or these metastatic initiating tumor cells, as well as the exhaustive T cells. And as I mentioned, we urgently need dual treatments that can make these cancer cells immune visible but at the same time, reinvigorate the T cells to increase the utility for, of immunotherapy for metastatic breast cancers. And what we identified very excitingly is a novel PI3K epigenetic switch operates in both of these cellular phenotypes. And therefore, we contacted CAS because we wanted to examine the role of this mechanism with their drug Paxilisib. And this is a very exciting and interesting drug because it has the capacity to traverse the blood-brain barrier. Critically, the studies that we were able to do when we were, had access to the, to the Paxilisib and it's pretty, it's quite exciting here because Casia have done a huge body of work already around this drug. They were very generous in providing us with all of that background, which allowed us to really be able to understand the contribution of this, this PI3K epigenetic switch that we've identified in these, these, these key cells important for metastatic cancers. And what we were able to do was we used our reverse translation forms our patient-derived liquid biopsy assays and a gold standard immune animal models of metastatic breast cancer to really start to understand with the with Paxilisib the contribution of this PI3 kinase in being able to be targeted in immunotherapy and excitingly the role of this epigenetic switch in IO resistance and I'm excited to let you know that this has allowed us to even develop a new blood test to track and monitor uh, the switch in, in, the, in, in patient bloods. And really what this means is that our, our, our data, the package of data that we've now uh, put together with Paxilisib and immunotherapy, we were able to, the, for the first time, uh, we have a novel approach to be able to, to tackle, we believe, a triple negative breast cancer. It could be a game changer, um, I believe, because firstly, our, our data is showing its utility in being able to reinvigorate a patient's own uh, the immune system, which is which is which is incredible in itself. But what's also exciting here is that Paxilisib is a drug that can cross the blood-brain barrier, and unfortunately, many of the young women that have triple negative breast cancer, the metastasis goes to the brain. And so the fact that we were able to, with this drug, we found a way 
harness the patient's own, own immune system, but also a drug that is able to potentially cross the blood-brain barrier to inhibit that metastasis in, 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 in these women is going to be a game changer, I believe. Absolutely, we're already doing that. Um, we, we, we know from our liquid biopsy assays that we're doing in these in patients across other multiple solid tumors where immunotherapy resistance is a major problem, we are identifying the same switch, which we believe means that this treatment has got huge potential beyond that of breast cancer as well in helping other patients with critical unmet um, cancers where immunotherapy has been successful but has had modest efficacy. Uh, we've currently put together an exciting uh, preclinical package uh, showing for the first time how we can potentially use Paxilisib in the context of immunotherapy. As I mentioned, we've, we've also advanced in developing a blood test that we're very excited about so that we can track and monitor uh, this marker that we've identified. And so really where we would like to take it to is a clinical trial because this is a, the treatment that I believe is going to really advance and help a, a breast cancer patients and that are urgently need treatment. So the sooner we can get it to the clinic, the more patients' lives we're potentially likely to, to extend in terms of their survival. Mm -hmm.